So one of the most frequent comments I see coming up on the tutorials is about my work speed, about how quick I'm working, what shortcuts I'm using, and the fact that they can sometimes be an obstacle to get around when following a tutorial. I think this is probably an issue for most tutorials in general. So the initial idea for this tutorial was for it to be a workflow shortcut, but I actually think it's gonna be kind of more accurate for me to go over the uh, the more or less quite confined package of shortcuts or tips in general that I use to navigate the software at quite a high speed, just over years and years of practice um, that I'm gonna share with you. So the first one is gonna be navigation and navigating the software. Now I remember being like this in Cinema 4D, if I drop in a cube, just as a focal point here, is you've got these kind of three tools up here. In the newest version of Cinema, that looks a little bit different, but I actually decided to record this in R23 instead of 25 because I have a feeling that the largest majority of people using the software are still gonna be looking at these icons. So you got this one, which pans you around, this one zooms you in, and this one rotates you around. Now, I do remember using this for years, about seven or eight years ago, and eventually you need to learn that you have a couple of other shortcuts that are going to help you. So these three things here are actually mapped to the three buttons on your mouse. It's a little bit inverted, but what we've got here is if you hold down Alt on your keyboard, I don't know what that is in Mac, I think it's Command, but if you hold that down and then we do left click, we're gonna rotate. So that's this one, I'm gonna rotate. If you hold down Alt and you use the middle mouse button, you're gonna do the pan. And if you hold down Alt and you right click, you're gonna zoom. So, you know, if, if you're trying to navigate a scene and you're like kind of zooming in and, but versus this, it's much quicker. So that's kind of very surface level basics. I can imagine there's a lot of you that already work like that. But if it's your second week in the software, you won't be aware of that. But this is also a universal language. Some softwares kind of flip it, but these shortcuts generally tend to say, stay pretty similar among most 3D software. But there's also another way of navigating, and that is using one, two, and three. And these directly correspond in chronological order in a non-inverted way to these. Now, I probably believe that there's people out there that work with one, two, and three, and there's people out there that work with alt. I work with alt, and that's why I, choose to, I chose to show that one first. But holding one and left click, you're gonna be able to pan. Holding two and left click, we're gonna zoom. And holding three, we're gonna rotate around our objects. Now, there's a little bit more dimension to the one, two, and three, and this is where I do use them in my workflow. And so if we hold two, you pay attention to this focal length here, we're not gonna zoom, but we're gonna increase our focal length. So that's super useful. But another thing we can do is if we hold three and right click, we're gonna be able to bank the camera and directly rotate on one axis here, which again could be super useful, especially for animating. Let's say if you come into the coordinates and kind of spinning it there. So those are a couple extra navigation tips there using the camera and one, two, three on the keyboard. The next thing I tend to do, which people seem a bit jarred by, is if I open up my live viewer, and I would be under the assumption this works in Arnold or Redshift or anything, but I usually latch it onto the left side here. Now, when you're rendering an octane, generally, it follows your camera. But there's a little trick, where is if you want a certain angle to be what's rendering, and you come up here and you hit this fourth button, and you split your pane into four different views, you can do this by also clicking down the middle mouse button. And it's kind of up to you which, which one you pick here. I've just got in the habit of picking the top one. But any of these, you can actually just change in cameras to another view. So if you change it back to perspective, I did NA there to restore the uh, the view mode. Um, now, Octane is still referencing this, this perspective view. That's where the default camera is, okay? So now we can move around, we can work, we could work on this cube and do things to it and not have to, you know, worry about the octane viewer referencing every single little camera movement. So that's something I do as well, very, very often. 
that again will increase your workflow speed and I think it's a very useful tip to have. The next shortcut I use is Shift C. Again, quite a common one, you might know this, but this is a game changer. So if you do Shift C, you can open up a sort of a search search box that will find just about anything you need. So if you want a cube, you can drop in a cube and then you can drop in a subdivision surface for it. And sometimes it gets a little bit annoying because it's gonna reference everything. So I think sometimes if you kind of abbreviate, abbreviate the words as much as you can, you could do sub D space surf and you'd get it really, really quick. But I use this for just about anything. Again, a camera can be an annoying thing to get to because it's gonna bring up everything but the actual camera you want. So sometimes it's easier just to hit that button. But this is something I use a lot, especially when I'm having to reference this menu here and the things that are deep in this menu that cinema is always kind of put in odd places. Um, so it can kind of be difficult to get to some of these things. And this is definitely just a really easy way of um, reaching those and stuff. Now, following that shortcut, the next thing I want to get you in the hang of doing is understanding that whenever you drop anything in, absolutely anything. If you hold Alt, it will make it, I need to select it first. When you hold Alt, it will make it a parent. But when you hold Shift, it will make it a child. So understanding that will again, save you a good few seconds because if you come up here and you know, you drop in your random effect there and then you have to stop and you have to drag the cube in and then, now if you combine the last two shortcuts I just told you, one Shift C over using the menu in this top bar and the other one holding Alt, we can do Shift C random and then hold Alt and hit enter. And it just slaps onto the cube like that. So you can get really, really quick with this. And again, the same thing works for the child. So you can get really quick with that kind of stuff. So that's definitely another thing you should get into the swing of understanding that Alt is parent and Shift is child. Another thing I do, which if you use computers in general, you will most likely know this. This is using tab to go between boxes. Now it does it chronologically and it hits every single value, even if there's not a box there. But this is an insane shortcut, especially if you're trying to set up like your render settings and you want to kind of get through that really quick. It's just going to kind of change the game there for that, you know, as opposed to double clicking this and typing it in and then going through all of them. This is really going to speed that up, especially when you're messing with parameters down here. Or for example, if you're dropping in a camera and you want to center all this out, you can just do that really quick. So tab to cycle through parameters. Again, this works um, just about anything. You can do it Google, you can do it everywhere. So that's another thing you should get into the hang of doing in your kind of computer workflow in general. The next workflow tip I'm gonna show you is light targeting. So I'm gonna drop in an area of light here. Now this is gonna change the game for lighting and there's actually kind of no instances I don't do this when I'm lighting. Now you'll notice it's always a little bit easier to use something like an octane daylight to light your objects because it's always targeted to the center of the world. Now what we can do is if we use our animation tags and put a target on the light and then target that to kind of our main piece of geometry in the scene. I generally work quite simplistically, so it's easy for me. But at the same time, if you have more complex scenes, you will still be able to identify quite quickly what you want to target. So if we apply that there now, whenever we push this light, it's pointing at the object. Now this is a big time saver because if you don't have that on and you've got to move it and you've got to rotate it and you know, if you're using fall of maps, it kind of messes with it. This is a game changer. This is something I've been doing a long, long time. This is gonna elevate your workflow so much. You can light different sides of objects so quickly. Definitely get in the swing of using the target on your lights. One last shortcut I'm gonna show you is something that's never actually been featured in my tutorials because I tend not to go on my file explorer because there's a lot of NDA stuff lying around. But one thing that is massive in my workflow when it comes to organizing files is utilizing shortcuts in the file explorer. So I've got the file explorer open here. One thing I'm always doing is lunging things back and forth between files. Now, the quickest way I do this is with control N. Control N opens up another instance of the page you were on. And then another thing as well is creating folders. And you can create a tree of folders miraculously quick with control shift N. So I'm going to do control shift N, I type in tutorial, and then I can go into that and I can, I can do scene and then 
output and then you know project files and then assets you just do that so quickly and without these shortcuts um i don't know how long it would take me to do this kind of stuff which is a part of the job you're not going to avoid so i figured it would be very valuable to show this and um, again that's another mm. So just editing back on the tutorial there, I found it quite humorous that there was even things in this tutorial about all the things I skip over in my tutorials that are to do with workflow that I was still skipping over. So I'm just going to kind of clear up the strays there and things that I think I was doing that I should have explained even in this tutorial. So a lot of them actually all involve this bar here. So what we've got here is when it comes to moving objects, We've got E for move, we've got R for rotate, and T for scale. So E, we can move, R, we can rotate, and T, we can scale. So that's another thing. Now, when you're moving an object, it can be a bit annoying. You can kind of go like rotate, and you might find yourself doing this, kind of trying to get it back to a position. Now, this button here flips you from the object's axis to the world axis. And the shortcut for that is W. So that's another thing I'm doing all the time because you can be rotating something, you know, and then you need to quickly come back from this axis to this one to move it. So those are those kind of shortcuts for moving objects around the scene that I'm also using all the time. And another one, if I hit C to make this editable, which is this button up here, turns a parametric object into a polygonal object. Press C. Another one you saw me do this at the start was N. Now that brings up all these display options here. N, B. And what NB does is, well, crikey, I should have added some. And what NB does is show us these lines. And there's a bunch of different ones. See, we can go to lines NG. Again, I tend to just reference this menu, but in speed, that is another thing I'm doing quite often, usually between NB and NA. Another thing I want to show you quickly, if I drop in a subdivision here, you can press Q and turn that on and off. And that's one thing I tend to do often. I can't really think of many instances it's been in the tutorials, but again, something very useful. Anyway. I think that's going to be it for all of these shortcuts. I hope this really helps your workflow speed up. I hope this helps you follow my tutorials or other tutorials a little bit better without always going to having to pause because you don't know what they're doing and they're cycling thing through things so quickly. So I'm going to leave that there. Have fun practicing these and I hope they come in useful.